Uh, do I have a Lucas here? You do have a Lucas. Hello. Oh, okay, fair enough. Oh, Matt, like, I have just been absolutely fucking vibing to the Thundercat soundtrack. <laughs> I, I cannot get over how much of a bop it is and also how smooth it looks. Oh, really? So this is what I want to talk about because, you know, like, I've been ill with the Rona and mm. you know what, like, talking about that can wait and it's, it's only being like, you know, a, a thing that's affected the entire world for um, a year and a half straight. Like, we need to talk about Thundercats. What about Thundercats what is thinking? relevant now. Or at least it's relevant to me right now because um, what do you know about Thundercats? What do you know about some Thundercats? Uh, I know the cats that really like thunder. Yeah, like, you know, any, did you ever watch it as a kid? Uh, never watched it. The most I know is that it a sounds pretty like you know He Man ish and pretty dope. It's, yeah, it's very um, similar in like to He Man in that sense of like we want kids to watch this and it's got lots of action in it, but we need to hide the fact it's got action in it by having like life lessons. Yeah. So lots of episodes end with, and what do we learn today, children? Yeah, it smacks of that vibe, and I did see like you know the old old death battle with one of the Thundercats in it, so I know a little which, bit about the power set that they have. Which might be as well one of the best death battles ever did. Mm, really I adore that one, just because the voice actors sound exactly like they do from the show. <laughs> but the reason I want to talk about Thundercats is because me and the missus, like we're both there with the Verona, just like at home, like, uh, what do you want to do? I'm like, let's just put crap on yeah. my laptop and lie in bed. Because Joey both in that state, you can't, you can't sleep, you can't move because you're just I, sweating constantly. I feel bad because like, I can't sleep right now because it's that hot and sweaty and humid over the last few days. Yes, I'm that and I've got a fever. Mm. And uh, we were just watching just like clips of old TV shows and like intros to TV shows watched as a kid. And I said, you know what? I remember being an absolute fucking like banger of an intro. The Thundercats intro. And I watched mm. it with my girlfriend. She's like, oh my God, who did this? And I was like, what do you mean who did this? This looks like an anime. In like a like, positive way of you think like eighties cartoons, you think that stiff He-Man animation, don't you? Yeah. And the show is that to a degree, but the intro is so fucking godly. And I'm going to send you now, Lucas, on Discord, um, a link to a HD remaster. Somebody did the intro. Oh really? Yeah. Someone did like a 4K, 8K upscale of the intro. It's about a minute long. I just want you to click on it now and just tell me. What like what you've seen? Just like, uh, just your thoughts on it? Because when we watched that, me and her were like, oh my god, where is this show? <laughs> this is fucking incredible. Let me just do that because I just clicked on like my internet browser, and the website was so white that it just like blew up my face. <laughs> it's like, oh my god! Like you can see, I turned down uh, the brightness on my face. Still like, I need oh, I need to address that as well because like, I'm at my in my house. Um, because obviously I can't leave, mm. so like my um, uh, lighting's not too great here. It's like click it, it's like watch it, and just tell me how fucking fluid is the Thundercats <laughs> intro in AK? It looks incredible. Smart. I need to uh, put a tiny bit of sound on as well after this. You, you, you need to have the sound on the Thundercats like, intro as well. There... I mean, this already looks great. Yeah, this is proper. Like this automatically smacks of like. Early Dragon Ball kind of animation. Yeah, like, oh, not as an X-Men insult, in. like no. in really like old school fluid animation. Yeah, and we found out after the fact, like um, yeah, an anime studio did it. Oh really? They brought an anime studio into did it? Yeah. Yeah, this looks and, super early anime. But how good does it look? How fluid is that? Where's that show? Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. there's not a lot of detail in it, but the animation itself is just is it's it spawn. One of the most god to- and keep in mind, I like came out around the same time as He Man, mm. like fucking He Man, which uh, you know, for, like it's good, yeah. but it's not like it's not known for its um, uh, like animation. No, definitely not. It's not that like that smack of like the cartoons that we watch when we were younger, where you can tell they're skipping out on frames and stuff. And not to say anime doesn't do it, but I think it just hides it a lot better. Yeah, we've got there's a lot of smooth, um, there's smooth movements in there, um, mm. and they do it. And there's like there's certain shots as well. I was like um, noticing with my girlfriend's watching some clips from like Thundercats and stuff. And that was one where um, they'll cut. I think it's just they jump over a guy and cut his sword. Mm. Well, they, he's got a gun. They jump over, they cut his gun in half with a sword. Oh. It was like a quick like one second shot of the end of his gun falling off. I was like, that's such an anime shot. <laughs> they want to put that in like a Western animation because fuck it. Why would you spend the time doing that? Yeah, for sure. And. 
Not quite as um like old school as Thundercats, but um Jenna and I were just also watching like a bit of an older anime in mm-hmm. Cowboy Bebop. You keep talking about some Cowboy Bebop. Well, what is it I, about Cowboy Bebop? I, I basically watched it like, you know, a year a year ago or sometime during lockdown because I don't know what time is anymore. No one knows what time um, anymore. No. And then they showed off like the Netflix pictures for the live action one. I was like, Okay. That's fine. But this just makes me want to go watch the anime again and then, you know, ask Jenny, like, you haven't watched it. Do you wanna watch it with me? And then yeah, we're just watching the first few episodes and like it's in four three and it's clearly old school animation style, but it's so fluid. Yes. And that's what just cracked me up about like this Thundercats intro because like we were watching just the He-Man stuff because we wanted to watch some Skeletor. <laughs> because I, because um, I, I think I made a Skeletor noise and my girlfriend is that a noise Skeletor actually? You're like Nyeh. yes, yeah. Like, is that a noise Skeletor makes or is that something people think he makes because it's the meme? Mm. So we were watching old like human characters and every moment Skeletor's on screen is fucking solid gold and that <laughs> set us on like a path of just watching like old intros. We got on the Thundercats and I'm like. Who told them to go this hard for this intro? People listening to this, just go watch the original 80s one or like that 8K remaster like some legend did. Mm-hmm. And just look, it's like, why did they go so high? So when you watch the Japanese X-Men intro that I bring up in every video when I've got the opportunity of who told them? There's multiple they could times do... I've gone and watched that clip since you've like mentioned it to me the first the first time you mentioned it off that fiend, that was multiple. Yeah, like that the X Men, um, the Japanese X Men intro, uh, the nineties X Men cartoon intro, I should say, is fucking god tier. <laughs> I I don't know who told them they were allowed to do that, and they did it. Well, it's, it's like incredible. as well, um, another one we always bring up, just Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh yeah, like fucking, what that bloody riff, that riff, like who told them to do that shit? It's awesome. Do you know they had a, a unique song in almost every other episode? Uh, they almost always use the same shitty... I say shitty, like shitty in that good way, because it's like, you know, it's just that, that really fuzzy, like, crap riff in the background and someone just sings, but they did have a song for, like, almost every villain. Oh, right, okay. And that's one of those shows as well, it's held up entirely by nostalgia, because I was rewatching some Power Rangers as well, and you can see, you literally see the seams. Because uh, okay. some of the people maybe don't know about the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series is um, the series it's based on, um, the Super Sentai series. Because I think everyone knows it's based on a, super, uh, a Japanese series they cobbled together. Not everyone knows that. The White Ranger wasn't in the series that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is based on. So is it literally that like every time the White Ranger's in it, they pan to a shot of him alone? Yes. And oh. if you look at some of the... If you look at, and that's what you never notice as a kid, that he's never there. Mm. But some of the fight scenes you look at, it's like the what Tommy's there, he transforms, and then the fight scene is just the regular Power Rangers, and then they'll cut to like shots of him just stood off to the camera giving his quotes. <laughs> you know what? That's incredible. It is, yeah, and it's one of the things you never notice as a kid, but as an adult, you're like, oh, you can you can see where mm. they're cutting it. Did they have the Green Ranger then? Because they fought the Green Ranger, right? The Green Ranger was real, but he was evil. Yes, that's what I mean. So, like, they had the the Green Ranger as the like the villain for that arc, but then they added in like the the good Green White Ranger as an extra character. Yeah, and the White Ranger in this series in Japan that he comes from is a child who ages himself up. He's Shazam. Yeah, he's basically Shazam. He's just Shazam, is it? And it's that thing of every time you talk about this one, because oh, Super Sentai is better because it's different. Different. Like, Power Rangers is so divorced from its like origins. It's like they are com- two completely different um, pieces of intellectual property at this point. Yeah, completely. And I think like maybe the the movie is the re- like the thing I go back to watch because it was made all like you know as one thing, and it's bad. It's still really bad, but because you just get all of those really awful moments that are just like hilarious and stupid it's still a fun watch yeah it's as well it's um it's bad but it's bad in a way where it's just pure nostalgia and schlock and if if people you know are kind of questioning if anyone knows what it's like to go back and watch like batman and robin and batman forever that kind of vibe of like it's so cheesy and bad and poorly done that it kind of kind of redeems itself in a way it holds up better than movies released only like five, six years ago because it's so set in its time period it was released. So for like um, the Tim Burton, 
not the Tim Burton, it was the Joel Schumacher ones, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. It's so, like, quintessentially just 80s. And I think, I say, well, 80s, like 80s 90s. And, like, yeah, it's like, so, like, um, 80s, 89 90s, was the first Keaton Batman. Oh, okay, so, like, so quintessentially, like, 90s. It's just this weird period where movies were a bit experimental, and it's before superhero movies crawled up their own ass. And with the Power Rangers, it's this wonderful time capsule of just, yeah, this is when, like, a dumb kid's TV show could be the biggest shit in the world. It's like the Bob the Builder song being a Christmas number one. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay, so I have Lucas the Rona. Are you surprised? I mean, I've already known about this multiple times over. <laughs> so I'm going to do the bit again. So I get a <laughs> chance to do the bit again that I've already done twice before. But... Uh, to preface all the questions that I'm going to be asked, Carl, didn't you have the vaccine? Yes, I've had both doses of my vaccine. Second question, Carl, um, why didn't you tell any... Uh, no, Carl, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. See, the answer to number one for the reasons why. And the third question could be, why didn't you tell anyone? Because I don't want morons on the internet giving me shit because they don't understand how vaccines work. Mm-hmm. Totally. Because you yeah. know the amount... There's probably a lot of people that will be like, oh, well, yeah, of course, you can still get get a virus when you get a vaccine but there's going to be a lot of people that also go oh you fucking loser you got the vaccine and it doesn't work clearly because you still got the virus yeah. and they the... just are stupid people that don't know how virus vaccines work sorry yeah and it's uh, advice from my girlfriend as well of like look i know i know um uh, that you know this but there are gonna be so many idiots out there who will point to this as like and try to use it as a club against others of look this guy's talked about all about getting the vaccine we like especially when we've been so visibly safe in our videos like mm. wearing masks and stuff and people who came in the few scant times we record in person recording remotely for like a year straight you know someone's going to be like ah oh, look he did all this and he still got it and see yep. if i got it and i'm not dead and i'm not in hospital and i'm able to still work by doing shit like this you were working what like three days after the worst part hit you yeah which you know what if people don't understand like people spend sometimes weeks recovering from this and because you had the vaccine your body had the ability to fight it off really quickly my brother and his missus got it um, before the vaccine was available mm. and it put my brother on his ass for a week and it put his girlfriend on her ass for a month actually i took a month off work i take i had two days where i'm a little bit sick and i still was up and about mm -hmm. and like you no know, doing odds and ends but, you know, as we said, people just won't get them. People won't understand. If this oh. pandemic has proven anything, it's that a lot of people just don't fucking understand how this works. Yeah, and um, I've been in good spirits about the whole thing. Mm. It's one of those things, it's so, like, existential at this point, like, the threat posed by COVID. People, like, unless you've had, like, direct personal experience like I have with, like, you know, family and friends mm -hmm. and things of that nature, like, it's so existential. So I guess it's... Um, a unique opportunity for me to talk personally about what it's been like to have COVID, and it sucks ass. Not from like you know the physical um, uh, side effects. If anyone's wondering how it feels, and I guess everyone has a different response mm -hmm. to the virus, even the vaccine. That's like you know kind of like the danger of it. Where um, I've heard people describe it as like um, a pneumonia, a flu, a cold, just feeling a bit stiff. Uh, for me, it's felt like having just a really, really bad cold. Mm -hmm. In the sense that I've had um, a really bad blot nose, a really bad sore throat to the point where I couldn't swallow. Um, and I've had a really bad fever that keeps breaking over and over again. So I like, um, uh, like for the first night where I had it, where I was like asleep and I woke up like 15 times that night because I couldn't breathe, because I couldn't swallow. So I woke up with just my mouth completely full of, like, phlegm. I had to go coffee up in the bathroom, mm. go back down, lie that down. Like, I'm freezing fucking cold, wait for the fever to break, wake up again an hour later, have to go do that again. Yeah, and it was that for, like, what, a day, two days. And I just oh. thought to myself, now imagine if this was, like, a month long and it felt oh, ten yeah. times worse. I was just going to say, at least you had that little, like, plushy ante to keep you going. That was the one. That was the picture that just summed it up because the first day I had it, I'm there like that. It's like, and my girl, she just got a picture of me just like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. And she said, Cal, you do not look fine. <laughs> because it's just me curled up with a fucking Annie. You're like, uh, I can't I'm move. And okay. I'm going to go back the, to work. I'm going to go stream, stream tonight. Like... The stream, I can probably find that photo. There it is. Yeah, this is what I was like the first day I had COVID. I'm like, uh. 
just curled up with my Seattle <laughs> man eater. Just not doing well at all. Oh. Yeah, and it was just um, uh, that was the first day. And then just the rest of it has been just this constant just feeling of just not being able to do things just quite at 100%. Right, yeah. And like I know we recorded what on Monday and streamed on Monday, and you're like, mm -hmm. I'm still not 100 percent there, but yeah, like we're getting there, we're getting there. Yeah, I've got an over like the worst of it, which mm -hmm. was just like you know every hour or so, it's like I can't move. I have to like go to the bathroom and clear my throat, and it's just yeah, and that's with the vaccine. Yeah, it's nasty, like a thing that's killing people almost. You know, kill people every day. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, and it is what's been most strange about it though, is uh, just how much red tape there is to go through. Because um, me and my girlfriend have been very much on it. I think the entire channel has, like, you know, we've been very much on it in regards yeah. to safety and stuff. It's like you were supposed to be coming over to see me this week, I had to push all those plans back. But yeah. uh, the first day I had it, it's okay. I took a test. It's um, uh, positive. Okay, now I need to order another more um, comprehensive test from the government, and then they'll send it off to their lab. While I'm doing that, I'm filling in a bunch of forms online. It's like, this is a fucking ball ache. Mm. This form takes like 20 minutes to fill in. It's like every single bit of my information three times. It's like, I describe it as, you know, when you fill in a job application and the job application after you've filled it in, make sure you upload a CV with all the information you just filled in. Oh, fucking don't. Yeah. It's like, like you've imagine... got to fill in a cover letter and their like application form, then provide your CV and a cover letter as a Word document. And it's like, why the fuck have I just spent all that time putting the information in? <laughs> that is what I describe filling, like navigating the government website where you've got to um, uh, fill in and register that you have COVID. And it's like, it's no wonder people are not fucking doing it. They must just get to the second time they've got to put in their address and be like, well, I've already given you my fucking address and my <laughs> NHS number. Why do you need it again? And then um, when I got my second test, because people don't know how things work in the UK, you've got these like little... Um, portable tests that they send to everyone's home. You get seven free ones a week. Um, I encourage yeah. anyone who's British to get as many of them as you can. Use them liberally. You know, you're safeguarding yourself and others when you do. Mm -hmm. And you might get, you know, you might get a week off work. Um, do you see that as well? You can fake a COVID test if you drink orange juice. Uh, I saw that people were like putting things like lemon juice and something else onto the the thing instead of your saliva. Because you have false that in and it was given a false positive. Yeah, so you can get a week off work or out of events and stuff like that. Anyway. Once you've done that, you can get sent a more comprehensive test that's sent to a lab, and that'll give you like a more accurate result. And um, once you've got that, um, I got about fifteen fucking texts um, because I had to register like my phone number like four or five different times on the oh. government website. And each individual time I did that, even though it's part of the same um, uh, registration process, resulting in a separate email, separate text. And then while it was going, it's like, did you send your test to a post box? It's like, well, you told me I'm not allowed outside. No call. So, that that internal post box that you've got in your flat, yeah? Yeah, that's the thing. It's like, they kept saying, do not leave your house, do not leave your house, do not leave your house. Can you leave your house to drive to a testing centre? No, I can't. Okay, so I had to like, wait till midnight. <laughs> oh, my girlfriend did the first time, then I had to wait till midnight when she did hers. That was a couple of days later. But wait till dead late, and she ran out the house to a post box nearby, and then came back in. It was like, well, hopefully that's legal. Because it's like, this is your yeah. legal opportunity to stay inside, but you've got to post this. It's like, how? Yeah, like, Sorry. It's really confusing. And it must be really confusing for like older people yeah. who aren't maybe computer literate and they're dealing with all this shit and they're like five different text messages within the space of like two hours of like do this, do this, do this. And it's all redundant information because it's telling you to do the same fucking thing. And then when I got my second positive test, like confirmation you have COVID, like you need to isolate for this many days, uh, fill in this second form again, which was the same form I filled in already, but again, to register that you actually do have COVID. Now go onto the app. Not the NHS app, but the NHS COVID app. Go onto that, use this number, um, put that in to register that you've got a positive result. I put that in. Oh, it's, um, uh, what's the word now? Um, case sensitive. And your iPhone automatically just like capitalise the first word. It's like At that doesn't point, count. I just lock my fucking front door and I believe again. Yeah, at that point, like, you just give up. Yeah. Like, how many people do you think just give up when they get to this point? 
I, I can't comprehend how poorly that's being dealt with if that's what you have to fucking Lucas, go for. It. it gets better because once I'd done all that, I did all that so that anyone I'd be in proximity with, because you know, we all got phones on us. Mm -hmm. uh, the NHS COVID app does have track and trace on it. If you've been near anybody uh, for an extended period of time and uh, within a certain distance, it'll tell them you might have been close to someone who tested positive for COVID. My girlfriend has been in my house for a week. We have not been more than four foot away from each other. Um for that entire week. Uh, do you want to guess how long it took my girlfriend to get a ping that she'd been close to someone with COVID after uh, I filled in that information? Well, my question was, has she even got a ping? Uh, she got a ping uh, about a day later. And she got the ping. She filled in all of her information. Um, and do you want to guess what the NHS COVID app told her to do after she filled in her information? I mean, I'm going to play devil's advocate here and be like, so it told her to self-isolate, right, Carl? It told her that she was fine. So the NHS COVID app, which cost about a billion dollars, I think a billion and a half dollars. Something ridiculous, yeah. Um, to make, can't even tell that someone was sat within like four or five foot of someone who tested positive for COVID for a week straight. And it advised them that they were fine and that they weren't at risk of having it. My girlfriend tested positive the next day. Yay. But if she'd have, like, say she was my next door neighbor, yeah. And, you know, like, she'd been in close proximity that way. Oh, you know, we stood in the elevator together, or, like, been to the gym. Anything like that. Or anyone else. I like, saw that's the next one on a train. I went a couple of feet on a train. They, they could have easily just got it. It's like, that's how I did. I got yeah. it, presumably, from, like, you know, going to the gym or something like that. Yep. Uh, they would have got that and said, oh, no, you're fine. You can go out. And it would have been until a couple of days later that have, like, felt sick themselves and then taken the test. And, they, and this is why, like, you know, it spread so much, it, yeah. It but also, so how much, can the app not know? But last thing, how this is why people say like such fucking negative things about this app because it's just so inconsistent. You might as well just fucking flip a coin every day. Yeah. Must be like she's been sat next to me. Our phones mm -hmm. were next to each other. Yeah. At one point, so they charged next to the, in the same fucking plug socket. It it could have like you know if you had NFC on, could have just there sat there and. Just messaged each other like, you know what? Carl's got COVID. Like, stay indoors. Like, that's how close your phones would would have been together. Yeah. And she got given the all clear. And like, if she'd have wanted to, because at that point she could have left the house. Yep. And she could have gone anywhere and spread COVID to anybody that she met up with. And she the amount of is... people that a ignore the app, but b only isolate or try to do anything if the app specifically tells them they have to. Yes, I'm only going to do it if you specifically tell me that I do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and someone's asking how strict like uh, restrictions in your area. Well, they're entirely self-imposed. It's like at um, this point, uh, pretty much everything is on the onus of the the population, yeah, the individual. And I'm taking it very seriously, and I'll be isolating until um, the day that I'm going to get the all clear, and I'll be taking a test on that day. Same with my missus. And so I was asking, how do you get food? Luckily, uh, we'd just gone for a massive food shot a couple of days prior, and a friend of mine did like a care package drop where he's like, here's a loaf of bread, some milk, just left it outside the front door. And here's one of the funny ones, because it's like, uh, my girlfriend's like, well, I need some ladies' things. I need some ladies' things that have got to be inside for like, you know, 12 days. So she's got one of her friends to drop stuff off. We were sat down yesterday, like, can you hear something? I'm like, yeah. Sounds like someone's at the front door. It was a friend just posting. <laughs> um, sanitary fucking products through the front door. It's like, we appreciate you doing it, but it's just that thing, just one by one through door. So she didn't. Not bother. just like a text, I've left it outside the front, just like. Hmm. One by one, it's that fucking out. It's like they know you're in. Yeah, well, definitely, I've never been more in. Oh, God, that's fantastic. Yeah, that was quite funny. But yeah, that's what it's been like having it, and presumably, like, I'm over the worst of it now, so like my next eight days of um, uh, self isolation is going to be sat inside, not doing very much. And annoyingly, well, thankfully, um, uh, we were able to get some of the recording stuff back to my house. Mm. And then that means as well, like you know, obviously, before like you come, uh, I I go to visit you in Sheffield again and go to the office. Like we'll make sure that everybody's you know nice and COVID free and stuff. It's the one, yeah. And and presumably, like, you know, obviously you guys will be because you've 
uh, isolated all that time, etc., etc. Yeah, et we isolate that entire time, and we're gonna like you know have to we'll make sure everything is um, uh, sterilized for anyone comes in uh, because we've got all the stuff in to do. It's just what a fucking ball ache, and you can see why people just give up. Yeah, it's when yeah. I was like when I was there on my phone, my girlfriend asked what I'm doing. So I'm filming in my information She's like, again. So yeah, it's the third time it's asked me to fill in the same bit of information, and you just give up. It's not only like saying, like, um, fill in every place you've been in the last, like, you know, week and a half, including, like, postcodes. It's like, how the fuck do I know the postcode in my gym? <laughs> so I'm going to, um, because I can see on just the video version, I'm getting slowly just encompassed by the darkness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. It's getting a bit dark around here. It's all good. So but just ready? give me, like... No problem. So what I'll do is like, I'll just sneak behind my PC and turn my lighting up a bit. No worries. Cause I'm record. We are recording this live, so the people watching live, like, I am going to plan to like stream and stuff while I'm at home. It's, the stuff that I have available is quite limited. Mm -hmm. So I don't have my Xbox with me. That's at the office, so I can't do any more of my Destroy All Humans playthrough. And there's not really much I can do in that regard, but I'm going to try to um, like, you know, just stay as online as I can because otherwise, what the fuck else am I going to do? Because I've we can't record. Thankfully, we're ahead on fact theme videos. So, if anyone wondering what about fact theme videos, we're way ahead on all of them. Don't worry about fact theme videos. We have so many of them in reserve. We've not even gotten to ones we start recording in person yet. Um, but the one exception that might be is Lucas gets back and Wiki Weekends. And oh, we've still got yeah. enough of them, right? I would say Wiki Weekends, we've still got enough of them in reserve, haven't we? Which uh, we started. Yeah, because like, I've still got another one or something to edit. Left a, there's a couple think, more that can um that have been recorded in the office between you and I, yeah. Yeah, there's like four or five of them left. Like Wiki Weekends are the thing we're most likely to run out of. Yeah, but if we run out of Wiki Weekends, like we've still got the, the fat theme regular videos going out. Yeah, we've got absolutely um uh, like we're stonked on in regards to content. Mm -hmm. Well that's the thing as well, you know someone's gonna ask that, and I get it. Um the uh, relationship they have with me is entirely superficial and they for the most part people only really give a fuck about the videos release it's just one of those things that I, it feels so cold yeah that i can make an announcement like yeah i'm just like you know at home recovering from the pandemic that has ravaged the globe and you know for a fact someone's first question is going to be what about fact theme videos though it's like well i'm going to focus on getting better and not dying but carl content yeah content so, right? yes like Black theme content will continue unimpeded, and in fact, um, uh, you won't. Um, no one will notice that it's um, uh, that I've been ill or indisposed for about two weeks. And that's Personal the thing is, you know, content. this has literally disrupted our plans because I was meant to be up in Sheffield like what yesterday or the day before or whatever, like recording more Wiki Weekends. Yeah, we've got more Wiki Weekends and personal content for our own stuff. But mm -hmm. yeah, that's just, it's. I think we've talked about that haven't we? a couple times of um, people's only real attachment to creators is like what they put out and because of that it must it's so just uh dehumanizing to be on the <laughs> receiving end of like oh i hear i'm suffering um with a horrible illness it's like but what about me though have you thought about how that impacts me personally you don't know it's like not really now no and it's it's great that like they can turn it around that way but do it the opposite way of like, well, I just want to be left alone and provide content. Like, no, 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 no. We need to know all about your personal life. But when we don't give a shit about your personal life, we don't give a fuck and we just want the content. That's the, it's um, a catch-22, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You're going to get people from both sides of the aisle approach you in that regard. But I, just, I thought I'd answer that because I know it's going to be a question that's going to be asked of what's going to happen to Fat Fiend content. It's still going to go up. Mm -hmm. Like even if I fucking died, we've still got enough stuff for it to go up. Not for very long. Not for very long, no, because that <laughs> I've got the I've got all the rest of the footage hidden away. That's true. You've got most of it on your uh, your work PC. Yeah, Noel's got my password. It dies with me. I'm gonna do what Terry Pratchett did. Joe you know when he died, uh, he had like a bunch of uncompleted, uh, incomplete manuscripts, and his uh, close friend and the guy in charge of his estate. Uh, was under strict orders when Terry Pratchett died to run it over a steamroller. It was like, what a fucking legend. Like, he says, when I die, you have to. If you want to 
as the executive might say, you need to get all my hard drives and run over them with a steamroller. No one's allowed to see my unfinished work. It all fucking dies with me. I respect I was, that move. It's, it's because you have, like, what is it? How much art has been lost because people just died and then no one gave a fuck and threw it all away. But the idea that he actively destroyed it. <laughs> but I more like that idea than the idea that somebody else comes in and finishes your work. That's it. Yeah, I think that's what he was worried about. Mm hmm. Like with um, George R. R. Martin, well, how pissed off he must get of like every time he does an interview. What about if you die? He goes, well, if I die, I'm not fucking bothered, am I? Yeah, that's true. I hope he has the same deal where he's just like, here's the real ending to Game of Thrones. And he's just like, you know, it's put into his coffin, Viking funeral style. Yeah. They attach it to a just, flaming arrow. Like he's his coffin. there with his hands just like, you know, across his chest. And then, oh, God, it froze again. No. Oh. Oh, just murdered me. You froze again. Yeah, You're I know. Quick. It is my internet you, cutting out every now. You I literally and you... died. I died. <laughs> you froze. You froze just like you that were dead. That was perfect timing. Just there. You just froze in time, pretending to be dead. What a wonderfully meta thing to happen. Oh, God. Because I was like, you know what? It froze, but at least it froze at the perfect time. It was me just going like, you know what? It'd be great if George R. R. Martin just had that book in his hands, like the last book, just as he's he's getting put on the fucking, on the uh, the boat out to sea. Just book it. That'd burning. be fucking incredible. I wish they'd do it. I wish more creators like Terry Pratchett, like, fuck you. You don't get to read my work. Yeah. I'm dead. It's like, it's like the opposite of like what the estates of Michael Jackson and Prince releasing music after they're already dead. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh come on! And it like doesn't it happen all the time with like well, for example, uh, the one that comes to the top of my head is like using Tom Clancy's name still in stuff oh, that yeah. he had nothing to do with. Where Ubisoft are like, yeah, Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six in uh, it, I can't even remember what the fucking new one's called, but it's got like aliens and shit in it and it's like did tom clancy want this to go this way to be fair if i was tom clancy when he was alive i because one of the things about people that maybe don't know about tom clancy is that he had absolutely no military experience whatsoever everyone oh, assumed really? that he did because his novels were not only almost entirely about militaristic things and like you know based in his military interests but they were super accurate to the point where he genuinely got questioned by military officials like how did you know about this like some of the stuff in his books was so accurate to stuff that was either top secret or close to it like well how did you know who do you, like what's your experience is that what like, no was your man on the inside kind of thing which is what it became yeah because initially it was thought that he had experience but it was so classified that it was just hidden <laughs> it turns out no it wasn't he was just a dude and he just he was a fucking weird nerd in regards to military stuff and then it became who's your man on the inside nobody I just read a lot, and you'd be surprised at the stuff that gets leaked. Mm. And if I was Tom Clancy on his alive, and I had that knowledge that people think that I know something people don't, I'd start putting aliens and shit in, just so people think aliens are real. <laughs> just start saying, yeah, there's aliens I mean, are real, you know? Well, that's what you would do as Tom Clancy. I don't think Tom Clancy, like, you know, yeah, he's looking, in military looking down or above in the afterlife. I don't, not sure, not sure which way that'd go, but... Uh, yeah, just like, what did you do, Ubisoft? Like, again? Like, for fucks, I never wrote any of this shit. Like, get yeah, off. because he was like a huge nerd and a stickler for detail, so he's probably like, you're putting aliens and shit in my books? Stop that. Yeah. Like, I'm, st I'm still pissed off, though. Like, speaking of aliens and, like, military content, like, they never did that proposed um, modern version of Nazi zombies from, like, the World at War games. Like, they've called you, you have alien terrorists. I want alien terrorists, oh, man. Okay, right. I want the horde mode with alien terrorists. Oh god. Well, it's a good thing that we don't have to worry about Call of Duty anymore, isn't it? You can just What's like to God? blanks like that out of my mind and be like, "Fuck that company." It's dead to me. Activision Blizzard. Oh yeah. Well, yeah fuck you those know what? companies, I guess, and Ubisoft. Can we talk about that guy who just imploded his own career for absolutely no reason? Oh, this dickhead. that was great, John Gibson. Is that what his can name we just... was? Yeah. We talk about him because that's a really funny story because it's it's so self-inflicted and there was absolutely no reason for him to say it. Yep. O other than, you know what? I'm a white man and my voice needs to be heard on the internet. 
All right, so let's set the scene here, Lucas. I'm, I'm just going to, I can see you doing some screen searching there. Are you Googling this, the details here, or should I get them all? Uh, you get them all, because I was just changing the settings on my fan. Okay, no worries. <laughs> so I'm just way really set- warm. The settings on my fan, no problem. So I have uh, the like, you know, the basic details here. Uh, it is... Uh, got it here. Right, so... Oh, oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful, Lucas. I've just checked the guy's Twitter profile and he no longer links to the company he works for. I don't think he works for them anymore. Uh, he's still the co-owner. Right, I don't think he's... Um, I think he got fired, but he might yes. still, like... Him. And that's the that's the murky thing about all which this we can shit. discuss in a moment. Yeah. yeah. So let's set the scene first, and it is uh, there is a guy out there, John Gibson at Ram Yeager um, on Twitter, and he was the CEO for Tripwire. Is it Tripwire Entertainment? Or is it just Tripwire? Trip Tripwire Interactive. Oh, interactive. Oh, interactive. There we go. And they've um, published um, such games as Chivalry, Killing Floor, and Manita. And just for absolutely no reason. Oh, he deleted the tweet as well. Oh, of course he did. He got, he got he fucking did. dunked on within hours. He deleted that shit. So, oh, um... man. The thing is, for a guy who's so pro life, why is he so keen to kill his career? Fucking hell. So, let's find you know, a screenshot of a tweet then. Because I hate that he's allowed to do this. I think if you get ratioed enough, the tweet needs to be just like put into like a Twitter museum of bad takes. <laughs> we need to make a Twitter museum of bad takes for all the people who got ratioed to fuck and then try to delete it to pretend it wasn't them. So let's find a screenshot of the tweet as well. Because I'm fuck sure you, John Gibson. I'm searching his article for the... I'm searching for images, yeah. John Gibson tweet. There we go. He's trying to hide it now. It's like, we can find him. We can try. We can. Uh, you, well, Lucas, he tried to delete something on the internet. What a fucking fool. <laughs> okay, so we have here. So and on um, the 9th of the 4th, 4th of the 9th, fuck's sake. I hate the American fucking date sisters. So the 4th of September. Mm-hmm. He tweeted out, proud of the hashtag USS, uh, the US Supreme Court, affirming the Texas law banning abortion for babies with a heartbeat. As an entertainer, I don't get political often, yet with so many vocal peers on the other side of the issue, I felt it was important to go on the record as a pro-life game developer. So he tweeted that seemingly out of nowhere because he's never tweeted anything political before. Mm. Mostly just, just generic stuff of like, go check out this game my company made, that sort of thing. Yeah, and I've and... seen, like, in now that people have been going back and looking through all the old stuff, there's, like, you know, interviews and stuff that he's done where, yeah, maybe we we should have seen this coming a bit earlier, but... He was never a notable enough political... Not political. He's never been a notable enough uh, media figure for his political opinions to really, like, get on anyone's radar, which and is, I like, think, so like, baffling. There's a, there's a big difference between somebody just sitting there and saying that they are pro-life, which is something that you can... I, you know, I will disagree with, but I'm not going to say that you should be fired for saying that. It's to say, like, specifically, I'm pro-life and I agree with this Texas decision, which is probably one of the most prohibitive mm-hmm. um, uh, like pieces of legislation ever Fucking introduced disgusting. in the United States in regards to women's rights to control the, and have autonomy over their own body, mm-hmm. to the point where, like, it's one of... The, but you've got the church of fucking Satan coming in for the assist. Wait, what? Well, that's another thing we talk about. Okay, that's, it's, I want to hear our like, Satan's like trying Satan's to Satan's Don't worry, ladies. Satan's got your back and your uterus. He's like sorting all that shit out. But um, yeah, it's horribly, horribly restrictive. And one of the details of it that is especially heinous is that uh, there is like a new whistleblower incentive introduced where members of the public are essentially deputized. Um, to report women for getting an abortion and get a ten thousand um, dollar penalty. Isn't it so. also anyone like aiding and abetting within yeah. the abortion? Yeah, or suspected of doing so. Mm. So essentially, this is just a um, uh, just the Karen law, where if you just think your neighbour's done something wrong, you can call them up and get paid for it. Or call stitches get stitches, snitches it, get stitches. I said, and it's stitches. fucking awful. Um, especially since as well, like, um, uh, just it can happen if you've had a miscarriage. Mm-hmm. So now just imagine to put yourself in the position of a woman. And I know like some of the people, the men, like John Gibson, they can't empathise with women. Who've been in this dream, like but like, if you are capable of empathy, imagine being a woman who's had a miscarriage, one of the most like heartbreaking, gut-wrenching things to possibly happen to you, like emotionally draining and like just, just soul-destroying. Mm-hmm. Um, then some dickhead 
reports you to um, uh, the government and you get charged, they get 10 grand and watch you go to prison for life. For because murder. like, if they know that you were pregnant and you're not, they could just be like, well, fuck it, I'll get 10 grand if I report an abortion. Yeah, and it's like, what well, I didn't add, the miscarriage, now prove it, undergo this invade. And it's like, awful. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I've seen a single person I know or follow say anything positive about this. Even people I know who are pro-life are like, fucking hell. Yeah, like, I do not want to know or talk to or associate with anybody that supports this law. This is like... This is disgusting, and this is a huge step backwards. It is, like, so regressive. And this guy, out of nowhere, is like, great, I'm a pro-life developer. And it very quickly became one of the most ratioed things on Twitter that day. Mm -hmm. This guy was being dunked on. And what makes it, it's one of those situations where, a rare situation, where the dunkings are just so consistent. Everybody is in complete agreement, this guy is wrong. And even, like, like um, one of the studios that worked with Tripwire... Immediately, immediately like, put our statement like we're canceling all contracts with you. Like canceling all contracts. Like people working under him are like in turn like fuck this fucking dude. Mm -hmm. We hate him. Why is he being such a beast? Like why is he saying this? But uh, do you remember? It's like do you remember that story a couple months ago now where like a guy who worked for Stadia just said, "Oh, if you want to play games on Twitch, you should pay oh. licenses to us." Yeah, th that guy that came up again recently. He came up like multiple times over the. I can't remember what the last one was, but he keeps coming up over and over again every few months. Like, oh, look, this person had another asshole take. Yeah, but like, remember that? And it was the reason I'm bringing it up is because it was so universally dunked on. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't a single person in the industry that guy worked for, include, up to and including fucking Google, mm. like the biggest company on earth. And like, you know, his employer, directly or indirectly, was like, you're a fucking moron. We distance ourselves from your take. The same thing happened with this John Gibson dude, where it's like every notable person in the industry, including people working with or for him, were like, fucking, what are you on about? Go yeah. away, shut up. Um, and, he, and he got fired. I'm wondering like, if I can quickly just click on this guy's profile and find out the last thing that he did. But I don't think I'll be able to. Like, Maybe it's, not. It's Alex, Hutchin Alex Hutchinson. I remember his name, because like, Basically, he mad. keeps coming up as like, oh, this guy's a massive twat. Because he realised that being a bell end gets him news clicks. It yeah, doesn't matter it's... if I'm wrong, as long as I'm visible. Yeah, exactly. He's totally gone da I'm down for that because he's also, you know, had other things where it's like he didn't want females in like the video game because it was too much effort and stuff like that. Like, oh, that not bad. Characters and like the um, there's, there was other ones I can't quite remember. There's just a bevy of lists of things that he said that are just awful takes. Yeah, but what cracks me up so much about this dude, uh, just the, the tweet in general, is that um, until he deleted it, his profile is a picture of him wearing like a gas mask. And then above it, it says in massive letters, killing floor incursion. And then it's just got a tweet that says, I'm pro-life. And I think it was Maddox, who I didn't even know was still a thing anymore. Just summed it up by saying the guy who owns the company that made Killing Floor 1, Killing Floor 2, Killing Floor something or other um, wants to let you know that he's pro-life. Um, it's like guy who runs company that exclusively makes video games, near exclusively makes video games where you horribly murder people. Yeah, so um, what, I don't know if you saw about this. What's that? The, the Killing Floor um, like the songs in it or music in it yeah, they're all like weird Christian ones. Well, it's like his weird Christian metal band that oh, he put no. in the game that is like got lyrics like "fuck it, you can't pray at school" and shit like this, and like all, all pro life messages. I saw that like, like um, uh, early. Oh, actually, no, I checked. It's so uh, his, his tweet's still there. It's just, he's not there anymore because it's like so heavily ratioed. It's like he's just hidden from his account. So he's still got it up, nice and proud, right there for you. So he's not been deleted, Luke, so I have to do that one. But what's really funny is the tweet just below that is him like, I'm at PAX West. And you can clearly see in the photo he's not wearing a mask, and there's a massive sign behind him that says mask required. Of course. Right. And it's just it, so perfect. It's based on that Jordan Klepper interview, that really great one where he's at a mask uh, Trump rally. And he asks the guy, are you pro-life? Because yes. Would you do anything to safeguard human life? Absolutely, 100%. Why are you wearing a mask? Well, that's a personal choice. And it's just, that's all you need. That is those 
And I think it's summed up as like it's just a four panel um, interaction of just mm. those two sentences back to back. Are you pro life? Would you do anything to save, safeguard human life? Yes, I would 100%. Why are you wearing a mask? It's my choice. <laughs> That's all you need. And Carl, just to clarify, I just found the tweet. It was from uh, Imran Khan. And it says, like, okay, in about five minutes of research, become clear tripwire president John Gibson put his own Christian metal band in Killing Floor 2, including the song uh, Disunion Reconstructed, which featured these lyrics. And would you like to hear some of these lyrics? Uh, okay, before we talk about this, can we just say that Christian metal and rock? Yeah, okay, I get it. But I can never not think of that Hank Hill quote where he's talking to a Christian rock band. It's like, you're not making rock... You're not making... Um, Christianity better, you're making rock and roll worse. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's just like, you're so shit because it's like, I can't think of anything less metal than Christianity. <laughs> like, just strictly following a like, hyper regressive religious dogma. Yeah, that says heavy metal to me. There's a reason they pray to fuck you, Satan. Satan's like all in, he lets you do anything you want. But would you like to get a little glimpse into. Into the mindset, mindset of John Gibson. So, what is he in this band? Is he the singer? I don't know. I bet he's says, the bassist. It just says. I bet he's the fucking bassist. <laughs> it just says is his that, own Christian metal band. Is that shit? Um, but it says to start with. Out of these four pictures, one of the uh, the phrases is like one of the verses. Who gives a shit about politics? Says I'd like who, to share a thing says or man, about heretics. Says man who inserted his own political opinion randomly out of nowhere about an issue that literally does not affect him because he's yeah, got a penis. He doesn't care about politics, Carl. No. Who gives a sh- That's the thing. People always say who cares about politics. People care so much about it. Mm-hmm. They care so much! <laughs> um, you see, Carl, evil infiltrated our government and and it were a masquerading of sentiment. That's how... That's how- that's what it's lyrics written. don't always have to like, you know be read out loud. No, 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 no. Uh, this... Yeah, evil infiltrated our government and is wearing a mask of sentiment behind it. Um, the thing is, that, say, like this would be a great song if it was about Republicans. Because <laughs> yeah, that's it, it, about the... Democrats. You know it. Yeah, is. they're wearing a mask of. We're here to protect women. It's like no, you're here to control women. Mm-hmm. Which is the shame, isn't it? Where it's oh, it's always so ironic that people like this so loudly rally against liberal like politics and stuff like that, which like, you know, essentially are just espousing the ability to choose and live live your life through the way you want. And they frame it as you're not being given a choice. It's like we're giving you the most choice. We just don't want you to take away someone else's unless that choice is being a dick, which is seemingly what your only the only thing you want to do. Yeah. It's weird. It's like, oh no, but you know, but we want to be really nice to our community and be, you know, share the love also, by so controlling it, everyone. So in my chat, he's talking about Skillet being a Christian metal band, and the lead singer of that band is a huge piece of shit. He's a huge, huge piece of shit. He's exa- He's one of these people. Yep. Anyway, so go on, give me more of these like really bad like um, lyrics. Well, the next verse, or one of the next verses, that I forgot to tell you that you can't pray at school. I hope that you know that you can... No, yeah, separation of church and state, you fucking moron. It's literally the foundation of your country. The founding document makes this very clear. Uh, Separation of church and state is what your country was built upon. Carl, please don't mention Christ on the job. Wonder why I'm feeling like I have been robbed. So, yeah, this guy is just like, well, I'm not allowed to speak about my own religion anywhere. You're in a Christian metal band. You're singing it on a stage to people who paid to see you. <laughs> people are paying to hear it. You get to put this song in a video game and sell it to people. People are like he's presumably if he's in a band, people are paying to hear him sing. Like he's saying people like don't want to hear his song. People are paying to hear it. Mm-hmm. They're paying to hear you say this. It's like fucking the irony is lost on them. The self awareness is non-existent. Mm-hmm. Like Joe Rogan, isn't it? When white he said man that cap- eventually white guys won't be able to say anything anymore or be heard um, anymore. A month after he got paid $50 million to say whatever the fuck he wants. 
and get listened Every day. to by the most amount of people of any podcast ever. But no, it's so, like there's no self awareness. Oh God. I'll, I'll move on. Yeah, and what, one of the things that was really funny about this is obviously, yeah, he's stepped out. I think uh, whether forcefully or not, I'm wondering as well. I think it was forceful. And um, what was really great uh, for a while was if you click the link in his profile, it's like, oh yeah, I work here. It just had a big statement saying, no, you don't. <laughs> it's like he fucking fired. And fuck that dude. Oh yeah, completely fuck this guy. He can eat my ass with a spoon. And Luke, you said you weren't aware of like, you know, how Satan's helping all these ladies. Oh no, I'm not. You know where? It's okay. Um, someone in chat said it's the Satanic Temple, uh, not the Church of Satan, because they're two distinct entities. But um, the, satati- uh, the Satanic Temple, um, to the best of my knowledge, is um, a ironic um, organization that um, takes advantage of the fact that so many um, regressive laws like this one often um, are based in religion. And yeah. they often cite religious freedom as the reasons for, like, you know, using... Uh, they use it as a club um, to, like, get these laws passed. So what the Church of Satan and um, uh, the Satanic Temple and, like, you know, organizations of their ilk do is say, okay, well, if that's the case, well, we're Satanists. Satanists are a registered religion. You can become a Satanist right now if you want to do. Um, mm-hmm. Our religious freedom says we're allowed to do this. Uh, for example, uh, Joe, if you get in schools and stuff, they say, you know, let's pray. It's, yeah, separation of church and state. Um, if they try and do like like Christian after school shit, the Church of Satan and Satan Temple, they will come in and set up their own Satan one. Mm-hmm. So, well, if you're allowing this, you've got to allow us. And they this cite is the, a religious club. Yeah, they cite the same thing. And normally, uh, because morons don't want to like know have set the word Satan in schools, they'll back down, and that's how they okay. do it. And you know what? If like. If you want to be allowed to like pray in school or whatever, I think that that totally should be allowed. I think like yeah, and if you're going to do restricted that, restricted from expressing your religion in that you know in a safe way, of course, um, and in a personal way, in a personal way, and you shouldn't like you know be letting it seep over to other people. But I don't agree that it should be like yeah forced upon children to like all become Christians or whatever, unless it's in like you know a private Christian school like we have over here. And that's like its own like kettle of fish. And they'll mm-hmm. do the same thing when they try and put up like monuments. Like, you know, we've got to put a big Christian cross in a public space. Because, well, a public space should be secular. Like, you shouldn't have any particular, you know, religious um, iconography there. Unless you, and if you're going to do that, you've got to have them all. And if you're going to have them all, why don't you put up power? Why don't you put Baphomet? Where's our God? <laughs> Where's the evil Satan God? And like, there's a, I think it's in a documentary on Netflix. And I think the guy who runs it's called like Lucian Greaves or something like that. It's like, or Lucian Graves, maybe it is. Like, he changed his name to sound more evil. And um, they had a huge, big fight with this um, uh, like public park, local ordinance somewhere. Where, okay, we've paid to have a giant metal statue of our demon goat lord made. We want to have this in a public square. Because if you're going to have religious iconography there, we've got to have ours. And that's how they do it. They basically, they use um, Satan... Um, as a way to highlight the hypocrisy of religious organisations and show that, you know, and and, ba- and scare Christians into, like, you know, backing off from this sort of thing because they realise if they use the law to allow them to do it, then the floodgates will open, like, fuck it, Satan's coming too. Yeah, exactly. And um, I was going to ask is, like, do you know? I know, like, on the census, you can put yourself down as a Jedi. Satanist. I believe you can be a Satanist. I was yes. going to say it, Jedi. It uh, Jedi. You can put yourself sure. on the UK census as a Jedi. That is an option. And I'm wondering if you could do that, but with like, instead of like the demon goat hell, look, you could just be, I want a statue of Darth fucking Vader. Maybe. In in public, right next to your cross. Like, I want that shit. Well, that's the thing. If it was a religion, you'd have to like go for like whatever the religious, uh, whatever the religious well, deities are in. I guess Star you'd Wars have to put Canada. like Yoda there. Like, the, he's not the, really... the Jedi master. You'd have to go to like Wikipedia and find out what gods they worship, but if they worship the way... any gods, yeah. But one of, essentially they just use um, religious uh, these religious like loopholes, or these loopholes that religions use to get uh, break what is essentially like you know the founding document of the United States, like you know separation of church and state. They try and so they highlight the hypocrisy. Like if you're gonna let this in, you got to let Satan in too, and they're trying to do the same thing with this um, rule in Texas, where okay, there's a religious exemption. 
which mm-hmm. of course there is, it's Texas. And if there's a religious exemption, it is an ethos, a tenant of the Satanist religion, that um, bodily autonomy is very important. Mm. And that getting a, like, you know, access to an abortion is a, like, you know, just a founding tenant of our religion. And if that's the case, you have to allow a religious exemption for Satanists to get an abortion. Um, I mean, obviously, that is great. I'm wondering how muddy that gets. Of like, that, that's why they're doing it. The re- proving, they don't like proving that we, you are, you know, part of that. Church. You can join the church. You can join the church. You can but, join it for a couple of dollars, and they'll send you a card. As well, what my other thought was was like, so does that mean that the doctors that are aiding in those like religious exemption abortions, they're not allowed to get prosecuted for that, right? That's what the thing. That's part of the reason they're doing it. They 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 don't expect it in a lot of these cases to go um and uh, get enshrined in law. Mm. Is to highlight the hypocrisy. Yeah, of course. And is that thing if you've got a headline saying that um people are using religious exemptions for the church of satan or whatever the fuck to go get an abortion like that just like wait what you can get a loophole around a law by mm-hmm. saying you believe in satan that's fucking stupid so yeah now swip it out uh, swap it around how stupid does it sound yeah exactly fuck you you can't do this mm-hmm. yeah and uh, i think like you know i'm probably butchering a lot of the details there but um yeah there is a documentary about the church of satan or the um, satanic temple on Netflix, and it shows like how they go about doing this, and they just go to places where um, religious groups are trying to use loopholes in the law to um, get their messages and doctrines um, into schools and public places, and just take advantage of those same loopholes to get them shut down. It's just um, like I, I often I don't want to get too too like political about this, or, uh, any more than we already have, I guess. But mm-hmm. like, um, I just, I think like religion is good for a lot of things, but I, I at the moment, like religion and politics stop mixing like this is when it's I'm awful. just like, burn it all down. Like, well, it's supposed hate. to be like, you know, uh, I'm trying to think like, uh, satanic, because the actual rules of it as well, satanic temple rules. So I've got like the website up now, the satanic temple. Would you like to know about their rules? <laughs> yeah, sure. Because like, so, I'm very intrigued. But it's because they're just... Like, you know, fairly standard rules for living. And they are supposedly based in, um, uh, like, you know, the tenets that, like, Satan himself um, uh, would espouse. Because, oh, okay. like, uh, if, if you follow um, the Christian mythology pretty accurately, like, if you follow it accurately, like, um, Satan is not evil per se. And mm-hmm. um, he's just tasked with punishing sinners. Like, you know, Satan is a fallen angel in yeah. almost every version of um, uh, the Christian mythology. Yep. There was like been a couple of reinterpretations of what Satan is. It's like, well, God will punish you uh, for not striving or for not being as perfect as he is. Satan accepts you for who you are, flaws <laughs> and all. Like, Satan's actually a pretty cool dude. And um, we have it here. So we are publicly confronted, uh, uh, the Satanic Temple, we are publicly confronted hate groups for the abo- um, abolition of corporal punishment in pu- uh, public schools, apply for equal representation when religious install- installations are placed on public property. I probably should have read this first, to be fair. Yeah. Provide a religious exemption and legal protection against laws that unscientifically restrict women's reproductive autonomy, expose harmful pseudoscientific practitioners in mental health care, organise clubs alongside other religious after-school clubs in schools besieged by proselytising organisations and engage in other advocacy in accordance with our tenants. So that's essentially what they do. They just use uh, this platform. Like, no, fuck you. You stop trying to sneak Jesus in at school. Jesus is, like, fucking lame. Satan's where it's at, so we have it. <laughs> there are seven fundamental tenets of the Satanic Temple. One should strive to act with compassion and empathy towards all creatures in accordance with reason. Two, the struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. Three, one's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone. And that's like the important one there, and that's mm-hmm. the one that they, can, they use often. Um, like Joe, and you have like those religious really schools, like forcing kids to want to go like gay conversion therapy and stuff like that. It's like, yeah. no, fuck you. It's your body. It was given to you by Satan, and Satan wants you to look after it. The freedoms of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend. To willfully and unjustly encroach on the freedoms of others or another um, is to forgo, um, forgo one's own. Also, apologies for uh, my, my 
slight lack of reading comprehension here. I've got the Rona. <laughs> Beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care to never distort scientific fact to fit one's own beliefs. People are fallible. If one makes a mistake, one should do one's best to rectify it and resolve any harm that may have been caused. And finally, every tenet is a guiding principle designed to inspire nobility in action and thought. The spirit of compassion, wisdom and justice should always prevail over the written or spoken word. Yeah, I can't really argue with any of that. Like, maybe we should join the Church of Satan cult. Or is it the Church of Satan that this is reading from? Uh, this is this. They actually have something like the Satanic Temple versus the Church of Satan. Oh, okay. In only seven years, the Satanic Temple has become a primarily the primary religious satanic organization in the world, with congregations internationally and a number of high-profile public campaigns designed to preserve and advance secularism and individual liberties. The rise of the Satanic Temple has been met with an increase in commentary in regards to what Satanism is. Um, as media outlets struggle to grasp how this upstart religion has begun to shift religious liberty debates with claims of equal access. And that's essentially like why it was started. I think just the guy who started it got really pissed off. It was like, well, if you're going to look, and I think it was just over a statue of Jesus. It was like, fuck you, I want to put a big saint statue there then. Uh, with unfortunate regularity and much to our own chagrin, uh, the Satanic Temple is confused um, with an early organization, the Church of Satan, founded by Anton um, Saz. And or LaVey. In the 1960s, the Church of Satan expresses vehement opposition to the campaigns and activities of the Satanic Temple, asserting themselves as the only true arbiters of Satanism, while the Satanic Temple dismisses the Church of Satan as irrelevant and inactive. So there's like, you know what? Fittingly, uh, there's a little bit of argument about what Satan, like, you know, means and represents. Yeah, and you know, the, the Satanic Temple sound pretty chill. Well, that's the whole idea behind it. Yeah. So um, maybe, maybe I'll just... What's the word? Is it like Satanist? Uh, well, that's the thing. Um, you define yourself however you want. That's one of the core beliefs of it. That's one of the... Like, you know, it's central to their belief system. Maybe I'll, uh, maybe I'll try and come up with like a, a nice term to, to use for myself. This individual liberty is the um, most important tenant of it, and it's um, up to you to decide how you define yourself. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing as like when I did um, research for an article. It's not been published yet. It's like you know, it's been years now since I wrote it. But for um, what's, uh, so what's what's that evil religion? Scientology. Oh, like I was yeah. like, what's that evil religion called? Scientology. There we go. And oh. um, if you just read um, the religious information they put out about like you know what Scientology is on paper, it's a pretty um, uh, like open and tolerant religion that largely espouses and encourages one to use their own um, sense of morality um, in regards yeah. to like you know moral judgments and things like that. I like mean, for example, it's open to you being gay. It's open to like you know it especially tells people like your own body um, like is you know your own and mm -hmm. it's like you know a divine object. Um, it is like you know of the utmost important that only you have control over it. So they even support things like abortions. And then it's just in practice, Scientology's not really like that. That's how they get you in. I, I told you about that that time that I went to the like shop of Scientology, didn't I? And, and they try to get you in. Yeah, and it's like um, they had like a a like high street store rented out. That's how they to do try it, yeah. and convert people into Scientology. We were just there in Hamburg, like we need to. We can't not go in. Like, there's a big, just Scientology, like, room to just yeah. walk into and see what happens. And yeah, it was espousing a lot of like things that might make you go, "Oh, yeah," but then you actually look into a lot of the other things that they don't tell you at the start. It's like, yeah, and that was one of the things that struck me when I was writing that article because um, I believe the article's headline or the the tagline for it was, or the thing that inspired it, is that what do Scientologists actually believe? Mm -hmm. Because much has been written about them, much has been said about Scientology, but like, what is it? Like, what is it like to be a practicing Scientologist? And the question like, was asked by a, a, um, a reader after I found out was like, do they celebrate holidays? Are there any holidays in Scientology? Mm -hmm. Like, what, you know, is there a religious doctrine? Like, you know, what are you allowed and not allowed to do? Right. And if you just read, um, what they've put out, um, like, you know, as it is, without 
you're letting the outside influence or the outside information you know about the religion influence your decision. Um, it's pretty open and tolerant. And like, for example, you can celebrate stuff like Christmas. You can celebrate birthdays. Um, you are highly encouraged to celebrate the birthday of the founder of the religion, um, L1 <laughs> Holden and stuff like that. But like, that's an entirely other um, kettle of fish. But I found it quite interesting that um, Scientologists are allowed to celebrate Christmas. And in fact, are allowed to celebrate any um, event, a religious event that um, espouses the benefits of tolerance and peace to all men. I mean, that would be kind of a good way to get around only like having one holiday like Christmas off, wouldn't it? It's like, no, 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 I'm a Scientologist and I celebrate all of the, the nice, polite holidays. Yeah. Like, I'll also have Hanukkah off. Like, fuck it. Just give it to And me. you get Alon Hubbard's birthday off as well. And that's something you could do is like, you know, I'm a member of the Church of Satan. Not because the Church of like... Satan, Carl. Oh, sorry, yeah. The, the Satanic thing, Temple. Oh. We're, we're falling for it. We've done it. We don't, we're not part of the Church of Satan, Carl. It's the Satanic Temple, yeah. yeah. My bad to those guys, because they, they are fighting a good fight out there. But that was something that struck me as very odd, because like when I went in writing an article, like, well, there's no fucking way like, Scientology's like, going to let people, I don't know, be gay. Mm. And you hear it, it's like, no, according to like, you know, the religious um, uh, like, texts that I've read, like they 100% support people being whoever they are. In practice, they don't. And you, we've all yeah. heard the stories about Scientology, but right there in black and white, it says it. The biggest mandate is that you never shut up about Scientology. <laughs> it is, yeah. So that's the only thing that you have to do in order to become a Scientologist. But that did um, strike me as quite odd, because I wasn't expecting that. It's like when I did an article on um, how do Muslims pray in space. Hmm. People don't know when Muslims pray, I believe, usually five times a day. Uh, they face towards Mecca, or as close to it as they're able to approximate. And um, like, well, how do you do that in space? Because you've got you to can't... try and figure out where you are in, like, correlation to Mecca, but Mecca. you're like above it, or like the other side of the planet to it. Like, how? Yeah. how does and it also, work? you're in a space station that's constantly re like yeah. rotating, at, like you know, sometimes thousands of miles per hour. There is no way you can ever accurately face Mecca unless you were also rotating, which would be an amazing thing. <laughs> if, like just have like praying stations where it just rotates you at a like, super high RPM. And uh, they actually, this is one of those questions that they brought in actual Muslim scholars. They had a huge, big um, uh, meeting of uh, Muslim scholars and like high ranking members of the Muslim community. It's like, how does a Muslim astronaut pray in space? Hmm. And they eventually came to the conclusion that um, as long as one tries their best, because they also had a similar, arg um, not argument, but a similar debate about, well, what about if someone's paralyzed? If someone's paralyzed, how do they like, you know, go into the praying position? How do they show fealty to yeah. their God? And it's like, well, as long as in spirit you are trying, so they, um, uh, what they said is, if you're a Muslim astronaut in space, if as long as you like, you know, make the best efforts to face Mecca the best way you can, and then just like, you know, close your eyes and just think about it. Even thinking about facing Mecca is enough. And I just and, thought it was a really yeah. interesting idea. They've had that debate, and I, I love that solution of just not solution, but the more the ideology of just look. It doesn't technically matter as much as it does the fact that you're putting your spirit into it. Yeah, it's not the physical act of doing; it's the tr act of trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's it's more a, it's a um, it's a symbolic thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, one of the little bits of information I found while researching that um, is uh, one of the other debates that's arisen is: well, as man gets further and further out into the reaches of space, will Mecca become like you know? It's going to become less and less important. So, well, actually, no, it's going to become more important because it's you know, it's a spiritual home of our religion. And if and they're asking all. Well, what about if you meet an alien? Because this is an actual question that's been asked. Like, what happens if they meet an alien? Sh okay. Should we be nice to the alien? And according to Muslim scholars, like, well, yes, it is. Uh, it is our duty as Muslims to explore all of Allah's creation mm -hmm. and share our love with all that He has created. So it is like, according to um, like you know scholars' readings of the Quran, it is Allah's wish that. Muslims not only explore space but be nice to aliens. It's like, yeah, that's the fact awesome. that that's a thing. It's yeah. great, yeah. Like, and that's that's the way it should be. It's not like, oh, we are the the chosen beings on planet Earth, and mm -hmm. we are the only ones who deserve life or any bullshit like that. It's no. Essentially, the way that you should treat, you know, your your friends, your neighbors, like the people around you, treat aliens that way as well. 
yeah. as long as they're not firing lasers at Asgard. They might do. You don't know if that might just be how they say hello, but I really liked the um, the phrase of it is our duty to explore all of Allah's creation. So that was the question. Like, you know, the further we get from Earth, the further we are from Mecca, is that not a bad thing for us? No, because, you know, we're in a way, we're celebrating um, God. We're celebrating Allah by exploring, like, by, you know, seeing all he's created. The further mm-hmm. we go out, the more we're celebrating him because we're, you know, we're showing our love for him by doing our best to see more of what he's done. Yeah. It's like, who knows what cool shit Allah's made for them out there? We don't know. There might be Mecca 2 out there. I mean, hopefully, you know, they haven't made another planet filled with just garbage people that just ruin the planet itself. There's the nice, pilgrimage yeah. requirement. Yeah, and that's another one, yeah. Like, you know, it's um, a, to make a pilgrimage towards Mecca. And that's something that they're going to have to decide. Like, what about if a Muslim goes to Mars? He can't ever get back to Mecca. They'll never be able, they'll chance never they'll, never be able back, they'll never be able to come back to Earth again. And that's another what debate. If they can, though, what, if, what if it is just... What if it's a 20-minute trip back to Earth from Mars at some point? Maybe at some point, but there's going to be a stop up here it's not and that's a debate that's going to happen i love that they're happening and i i think it's really important as well because like uh, yeah there's a lot of people even now that can't make that pilgrimage and it's like not just when we get into space it's like some people are just physically not able to do that even now and it's one of those things where i love and i think it's like it just perfectly encapsulates the idea that these religious texts are so open to interpretation they're not written to be read literally because they were written in a time when Stuff like going into outer fucking space was not even on anybody's radar. Like going to another country was hard enough. Yeah, like they serve better, like they work better as just, you know, a, a set of rules um, uh, and guidelines. Guidelines, yeah. R- uh, a set of guidelines rather than rules, I was trying to say. Mm-hmm, yeah. And I think, like, the, I, I always see, like, the most important part of that is, like, kind of just learning how you should treat others around you and you know be be good to one another and that's the that's the nice takeaway that I I always enjoy from most religions that I've I've been taught parts about. Yeah, one of my um my favorite um interpretations of the Bible um is that it shouldn't be taken like Joe all the stories in it. There's mm-hmm. a couple of really famous stories. Like these stories aren't literal examples of miracles happening they're examples of things seeming like miracles because but they're just you know human nature and they seem like miracles because they weren't considered before and the example that i've heard used is the feeding of the five thousand which people don't know is a story that tells like jesus is there with some some people five thousand people in fact and they're all hungry and they're like well jesus what the fuck we're gonna do and jesus asks um people in the crowd it's like you know some of his followers go get some food they come back and they've got, I think it's three loaves and five fishes in total. Yeah, just a bit of bread and fish, not enough for 5,000 people anywhere near. And, you know, the story goes that Jesus passed it to the first one in his group, said, eat as much as you can, and then pass it on to the next person. Pass what you have left to the next person. And by the end of it, they ended up with, like, several baskets of loaves and several, like, hundred fish. And that's read as a miracle. But another reading of that story... Um, is that um, it's not that the food was literally multiplying, it's that when Jesus asked for the food, um, only a few people shared what they had. But when they were told, eat as much as you can and share it to the next person, there were people who already had food. And they added their food to the pile, yeah. and it kept going along. And it's, so it's like not the so power much of as... community all coming together. Yeah, and it shouldn't be read as a story about Jesus magically multiplied the fish and the bread. One, because that's impossible, and two, because that's a really bad story because there's no real lesson there. The lesson is, if you're fucking hungry, your God will magic more food into your mouth. Mm, yeah. And it's actually a much better version of the story. It's better um, as an example to like, you know, take morals from that. Sharing makes it feel like there's more stuff because everyone was like contributing. Mm-hmm. Rather than, as you say, just like they got a couple of bits of bread and fish. It's like, no, when you ask a few people to go do that, like they come back with a little bit of food, but when you ask five thousand people to all come together and give yeah. what they can contribute, then it provides for everybody. Yeah, it's it's just um, uh, a you know a roundabout way of saying if everybody contributes a little, there's enough for ev- there's enough for everyone if we all put a little bit in. Could could we just let like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk know that? 
Yeah, that's the thing. It's, yeah. it's, like, can we? And that's the uh, there's there's many ways to interpret those stories. Like if you don't interpret them literally, you interpret them, they're metaphorical. And if you read a lot of the stories from the Bible as being metaphorical, you know, like Aesop's fables or something like that. And mm. I feel like if a lot of the stories in the Bible, Jesus was a fucking ant eater or something like that. So that's the thing. No one reads Aesop's fables as being literal because they're animals. Yeah. Um, but people seem to read the Bible stories as being literal instead of metaphorical. I'm still annoyed that I haven't figured out how to turn water into wine, though, Carl. So when I was mentioning you ever turning the water into wine, well, I'm not um, all too familiar. Um, uh, like, you know, this yeah, um, it's interpretation not all of the Bible. Hard, really. Yeah, this interpretation of the Bible I read, it only listed a few of the stories, and the water and wine one wasn't in there. I'm still mad I can't do it, though. Make a fucking killing. But there probably is, like, a metaphorical lesson you could learn from that. I'm sure there is, yeah. Yeah. Again, I, don't know I can't think of what it is off the top of my head, but I do like um, uh, that's just a really good the story. He didn't literally multiply the bread and the fish. It's that when Jesus told everyone to share what they had with the person next to them, suddenly it felt like they had a lot more because you've like, wow, 5,000 people chipped in and there's enough to feed everyone. Mm -hmm. And it's the people who didn't have any, couldn't the people who could only contribute very little, contribute a little bit, the people who contribute a lot, contribute a lot. Exactly. By the end of it, it turns it out it evens more... out to being a good amount of food for everyone. It turns out you actually had more than you needed when you first thought. It's just no one thought to share. Well, it's like asking um, people to contribute towards, like, you know, charities and donations and stuff like yeah. that. Like food drives and clothes drives and stuff like that. Like, a lot of people just go, well, I had all this shit just lying about. I might as well yeah. give it away. And then the people who don't have a lot, like, you know, that that's the other side of the spectrum. It's the essence of charity. And it is, of like... Yeah, there's there's some people that have got a lot to spare, and the moment they realise they've got a lot to spare and ask to do so, they probably will. Whereas, like, obviously that then balance out with the people that need. I like as I was someone in chat, it was like, the Bible promotes socialism. It always has. Keep in mind, like, Jesus, like, one of his, the best stories about Jesus for me is when he goes into a church and starts whipping motherfuckers. <laughs> That's one of my favourite Bible stories. Because we used to have to do, like, Bible stories in school as a kid. Yeah. That's yeah, right. no, and they like, were saying, like, public school, and we got taught Christianity as, like, yeah. a, a mainstream thing. Yeah. Because our head teacher was a Christian, and he'd read Bible stories. And we had people that would, like, of other religions that would literally yeah, ask and stuff, not yeah. to attend, like, you know, assemblies and stuff like that because of it. Yeah. And I remember as a kid thinking that's really weird, and as an adult, like, fucking hell, it must have been weird for them. It must have been awful. Like, like you send your kid to school, and the head teacher's just fucking reading Bible stories at them. Mm-hmm. And I just like the one of when Jesus goes into a church and he's like, what are you doing? Oh, we're selling stuff in the church. He's like, no, fuck you. He starts whipping the shit out of everyone, flipping tables. <laughs> it's great. And you can read that. It's like, you know what? Jesus does not appreciate the commercialization of religion. And he'll whip a motherfucker if you do it. I mean, that's very true. But I do like the story where uh, he just goes in and promotes McDonald's and says like, yay, capitalism. Oh, man. Like, what's your favorite version of Jesus and why is it buff Jesus? Why, why is buff... Have you ever seen that um, statue someone made of Jesus? Or the painting someone did that's so buff, it looks like he's got a giant penis. I mean, I don't think I have. You might have shown me this at some point. Have you ever seen this? There's like a painting of Jesus, like so fuck where he's so ripped that he looks like he's got a giant fucking penis. Because like, obviously, like, there's a lot of muscle definition in the typical depiction of Jesus on there the cross go. because he's... Have you, have you, have you ever seen buff? ...starved and just gone... Got only a bit of muscle. Fagaloo, Fagaloo, because look at Jesus. Oh my god. Like, Jesus with the penis abs. What's going on there? What's the thing? Like, oh, is there ever seen as well? We've ever seen, like, uh, one of the things that I love about, like, old paintings is that they just can't handle it. They just can't handle, like, what bodies look like. Mm. Oh, wait, wait, I found it yet. Yeah. Here it is. Uh, this is. Uh, an actual painting of Jesus, and just describe what you see. Okay. And th this is my version of Jesus. Tiny buff baby Jesus. There is, yeah, a woman holding a naked cherub-looking child. The cherub isn't a fat child. It's just no, it's... a naked buff Jesus baby with like full-on pecs and abs. That's like a newborn. And you know what? If I saw that baby, I'd ask a fucking Jesus like, baby. Look at right the there. shoulder definition. But that is Jesus. the son of God right there. <laughs> Bodybuilder infant Jesus. Fucking oh unstoppable. Oh my word. 
It's great, isn't it? Well, I that's saw my that baby at the gym. I'd be like, mate, you can keep the machine. It's all right, I'll that's, go over that, it. That's the one for me. He's like squatting on the Smith machine. Oh, God. I'm just such a huge fan of like the weird lionization of that dude. Because he's supposed to be just like a man. Mm. He's supposed to just be like, you know, a man who just did like, you know, great things. And it's supposed to serve as an example of like, you too can do great things if you like, you know. Because he was humble. just, a, yeah, a common representation of man. And believe in others. It's like, no, he was a fucking super uber man born with a six pack. <laughs> Snapping the cross and whipping more fuckers. Oh, God. I'd love that. I, I want to see more depictions of just buff baby Jesus. That's the one that's like, um, uh, who is like the one of the gods from mythology of anything could take ripped Jesus? Let's just like assume that that's the version of Jesus. That is, it's like super ripped ass Jesus, and every story from the Bible is completely literal. Okay. Like, so he can yeah. do all that bullshit he can do in the Bible. It's not metaphor. No, fuck it. It's all literal. Jesus was like, you know, f- super stonked. And it, you know what bollocks to it? He's also got all the other powers that other people in the Bible had as a result of God. Like, there's that guy in the Bible who fires bears. Do you know about that guy? No. Yeah, there's a bald guy. It's a real story in the Bible. There's a bald guy who some kids are calling bald, so God gives him the ability to summon bears to scare the kids. So let's say Jesus got all them. He could turn people to salt. What God could take him on? God or baby? What God? I'm talking fully grown adult Jesus. Oh, because I, got... I was going to say, like, the Disney Hercules, Hercules baby could, like, baby take on that buff Jesus baby. No one could take on buff Jesus baby. He's too strong. He's I mean, he did, he did, like, get two snakes and just launch them across the earth. Oh, yeah, that's the that is Hercules did strangle the snakes as a baby, didn't it? I was like, who's that baby who beat the snakes up? Yeah, Hercules, yeah. he just, like, grabs them, ties them together and, like, fucking go. So do you think, then, Hercules could beat up Jesus? I think baby Hercules could beat up baby Jesus, for sure. Would you think, like, fully grown Hercules with, like, let's say, like, you know, Hercules with all of his bullshit. Mm. He's got, like, you know, the pelt of the Nemean lion, and he's got, um, uh... You don't get the Gorgon head, does it? That's, um, uh, Perseus. And what else does Hercules get? He gets the pelt of the Nemean lion. I know that one. Um, I don't know, because there's so many depictions of Hercules in my head going around all in one go. Oh, well, the Twelve Labours of Hercules, like, I think he gets a couple of th- things from that. He gets the Golden Fleece. Is per- I always get confused between these mythologies. Mm. So just check. Let's check the stats for Hercules, shall we? Google um, uh, Hercules equipment. See what oh, he's got. Are we doing mythology? Yeah, Hercules for mythology equipment. So now he's got the pelt of the Nemean lion, which, according to myth, was um, entirely... Um, bullet and sword proof. So Hercules does have um, a, a complete immunity to stabbing weapons, and we know for a fact Jesus does not. That's true. Because Jesus was famously stabbed in the side uh, yeah. by the Spear of Longinus. So it has the 12 I know way too much about here. like Yeah, it's the 12 labors. Okay, so what do you do? Let's get his stats up. Let's oh. try and, like, you know, power level mytholi- uh, mythological version of Hercules from this. Uh, the 12 labors of Hercules, he slayed the son of... Uh, the. Slayed the lion of Nemea. Yeah, the Nemean lion, which he takes the pelt from in most versions of a story, which is mm. completely bulletproof. Yeah, he adapted it, its skin as his armor. Uh, he killed the Hydra. So he fought, and that shows his wisdom, I'd say, because he kills the Hydra by cutting off all its heads, then burning them before they can grow back. Oh. Okay, so then after severing the beast's final head, which is immortal, uh, uh, it says Heracles, but you know, Hercules, Heracles. Yeah, uh, it dips his arrowheads into its blood, making them more dangerous. Oh man, this uh, you know what? Already, this is a bad matchup for Jesus. <laughs> Jesus ain't looking great yet. Jesus famously uh, does not do well with stabbing weapons. So capture the golden stag, showing his speed. Uh, he spent a year chasing down this deer with Artemis's permission. Do you know why you're doing this? I'm gonna look up feats of Jesus. Feats We're gonna of do Jesus. this. Ra- okay. Feats of Jesus. So uh, number four, he captured the. Um, a Manthian boar. The Manthian boar. Is that it's just like it's showing his hunting? Uh, okay, I've got um, I bring up the respect thread for Jesus of Nazareth. Okay, <laughs> which just which is a really good subreddit where it's just like respect insert character and they just highlight their most ridiculous things that they've ever done. Right, cool. So keep going through these, yeah. What you got? Uh, so we got he drove off the Stymphalian birds. Okay. Um, uh, he used a noisemaker. Crafted by Havistus, he frightens the birds and shoots them down with his poisoned arrows. The rest oh my God. Away, he shoots down an entire flock of birds with like one arrows. 
Um, he captured the Cretan bull. He wrestles a bull back into submission, sails back to Greece with it. What a legend. Um, he captures the horses of um, Diomedes, is it? Uh, I believe so, yes. Yeah. Um, oh my god, these horses are savage because their master has fed them on the flesh of his enemies. Yeah, and they're like wild horses and they just go fucking mad. <laughs> um, oh my god. He just shuts the king in the stable with the horses that just ravage and eat eat their master. Yeah. And then he just releases the horses. Yeah. The, Fuck you. Just these murderous horses. Just like, We've go, got Hercules. Go. You know what? This is going to be the showdown. Hercules versus Jesus. Because I've got the respect Jesus. And there's some pretty cool stuff in here that Jesus can do. Well, we've got four more labours. So she won't okay, the, do the other, Yeah, uh, go for the last four labours of Hercules. And then obviously we already know. The belt of Hippolyta. Okay, so he stole a belt. Pretty cool uh, belt. Probably has some magic powers on it. You know, he's got some decent gear already. Yeah, it just says stealing her belt. He captures the but, cattle of Giron. Uh, again, these pronunciations are not going to be great. Uh, that's the grandson of Medusa. And then he retrieves the apples of Hesperides. Yeah, and I believe that is where he holds up all of existence. Because that, I believe he gets Atlas to do that, and Atlas is the one who's um, supporting the universe in Greek myth. And mm -hmm. Hercules temporarily bears the weight of the entire universe. So that's why. Yeah. So we, we you know, know he, like Atlas reveals he knows the knowledge of the golden apples, offers to retrieve them for Heracles if he holds up the earth for him. The earth, okay. Because in some versions of um, uh, myth, it's like not earth, it's all of reality, all of existence. Yeah, yeah. And then, well, the uh, earth is still pretty heavy. The earth is a little bit heavy. And then the last one, bit. which is like, I don't want to get into it because it's paragraphs and paragraphs, but it says he retrieves Cerberus from the underworld. Okay, yeah. So he fought Cerberus to a standstill, essentially. So what we know from that is that Hercules is pretty much bulletproof. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get through the Nemean Lion's hide. He is um, prodigiously strong. Super fast. Like he, he, has super, he has super strength, super speed. Um, a pretty decent level of intelligence, I'd say. Mm -hmm. He figured out to fight the Hydra on the fly. Yeah. Maybe he's not, like, you know, the smartest figure, but, you know, he's got wisdom. So it's not intelligence, it's more wisdom, isn't it? Yeah, I would say so. Which is, like, more, like, the ability to apply knowledge in situations where it'd be um, uh, useful. And of just a fairly good all-rounder as a warrior. So should go through the, the feats of Jesus. Well, just one last note on Hercules. It says yes. his hobbies are hunting, adventuring, and casual sex. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That, that... That's, that's, we know Jesus doesn't do at least one of those things. He does, so if people does. don't know, um, background, Christian doctrines include the belief that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit and was born of a virgin, performed miracles, founded the church, died by crucifixion as a sacrifice to achieve atonement, rose from the dead and ascended to heaven, whence he will return. I mean, so that's most Christians one believe straight Jesus off the bat. Like, Hercules yeah. can't come back from the dead. So Jesus can. And um, we're going to start with his most notable ability, which includes healing. So Jesus, like, you know, he's more of a, he's a support. He's a support <laughs> character more than anything. So he's healed age. the blind. Uh, multiple times he's healed a blind man, another blind man, and then healed a bunch of blind men. He's healed a woman from hemorrhages, heals a fever, lepers, um, abnormal swelling, and heals a man's faithful servant. He's also healed people from crippling injuries, and including deafness and muteness. So he can restore the senses after they've been lost. And I'm going to say that if he can restore them, he can take them away. Yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, uh, he's also brought the dead back to life multiple times. So he's able to use his own life-giving um, abilities and bestow them upon others. Okay. He's also exercised a demon from multiple people, including once where he, mul he exercised multiple demons from a man and then banished them into a herd of pigs, which committed suicide. Oh my god. Which means he is able to not only control demons, but put them inside other things. So do you, would your G, fighting Jesus would be like? He'd be like a caster. Yeah. He'd be, yeah. Like, one of, he'd be like, you know, he's got a, he's a ranged attacker and he's summoning up like demonic pigs. Well, the question is, like, like, says, is he into necromancy or not? We well, technically is. He can bring people back to life. So think, oh, Hercules sends in those war horses. And then Jesus <laughs> just fills them with, like, you know, demonic um, uh, possession and sends them back. How long can Jesus hold the demons, though? Like, can he store them up and keep them charged? Like, 
the start of I'd the like battle he's stocked with 50 demons just like i'd oh. like to think that he can yeah i'd like to think he keeps them in like little talismans around his neck <laughs> he's got them in there he says here that what uh, jesus also once felled roman soldiers to the ground with a single sentence by breaking their mind Oh. Um, he's able to turn water into wine, um, caught a load of fish in times of drought, so he's able to just um, uh, alter reality. So re Jesus is not reality warping powers. Oh my god. And that's the thing, like, you know, we've, have we learned from Marvel, does reality warping beat strength? It depends how strong you are. It's like, uh, the Hulk can beat anyone, as long as he's angry enough. Yeah, the Hulk can uh, punch through time and space as one wiki weekend's tours. Yeah, um, he's also summoned God, two of the prophets of the Old Testament, and he wants glowed of radiance, so he can go Super Saiyan. <laughs> Jesus can go, no, he goes Super Christian. Uh, he can walk on water, so he has either, and I'm not sure how to interpret that. Would you read that as intangibility? I would read that as, like, reality manipulation of making yeah. the water underneath him solid, from based off this power set. Yeah, that's the thing, like... Would you read that as he's able to physically alter the molecular makeup of the water or able like, you know, become intangible himself or just float? I think it's that he can change the makeup of the water. Yeah, he wants control of the weather to calm a storm. So he's got storms powers as well. So which theoretically is in the ability to call down lightning. Zeus might have something to say about that, though. That's the he one, starts yeah, like, using you know, lightning on his son. That's that yeah, maybe. Got... Maybe, like, you know, and that's the thing as well. This is Jesus' own power. Mm. It's bestowed upon him by God, but he's not calling in God for the assist. He's just glowing with godly radiance. Mm -hmm. Which, in the same way that Hercules' power comes from, you know, his divine origins. So I don't think Zeus would be able to step in even if Jesus started calling lightning. No, but he might get pissed off. He might get pissed off, but there's not much he could do about it. It says here as well that um, he wants summoned a fish that had money in its mouth so he can make it rain fish. <laughs> money so he could summon a storm. No, so he could summon fish, summon a storm. You know, and you've heard those stories about like storms taking fish and like dropping them other places. Mm. So he could summon a storm, summon a bunch of fish, put a bunch of demons into those fish, and trap Hercules in a tornado full of demon fish. That is like that is a reading of Jesus' powers. He could do that. Other feats include he once resisted the temptation of the devil himself. So he resisted like you know the father of all lies. Then again, the original sinner. You know. Um... Like Hercules has many encounters with Hades. So. He does, yeah. So that's probably an even. Like, he fasted for forty days in the desert. So he's like, you know, he has extreme durability and resistance to temptation and pain. Um, can summon more than twelve legions of angels. <gasps> Enter the room with closed doors, so he can walk through walls. <laughs> oh, I know. And then finally, so that does it? mean that he can. Either teleport or walk through walls. Teleport so or become intangible, and either way, that is a form of like escaping those poison arrows. Yeah, that's the one. So that means that if Hercules used those arrows, Jesus could either become intangible or teleport out of the way. And if he could become intangible, that means he can pass through the Nemean Lion's pelt. However, Carl, mm -hmm. there's one big thing we're forgetting about, and that's battle that? experience. Yes, Jesus does not have much battle experience unless you count when he went into the temple and fought all the merchants. That's true. Because he just, didn't do very well against the Roman army. Whipping people. But that's the thing. If this was a death battle, so Joe, let's go by death battle rules here, where <laughs> Jesus, as usual, rules against killing are not observed. Because Jesus is like, you know, fundamentally against killing. It's a one on one. They know they have to fight to the death. Yeah. And it says here that um, Jesus once cursed a fig tree to wither and die. And it's worth noting um, about that story that it wasn't fig season. Jesus has wanted figs. Oh. He just wanted a figure, was pissed off that the tree didn't have any, so he killed it. <laughs> so he is capable of just causing things to wither and die, which means that he has the ability to manipulate time. Mm, maybe. So you yeah. Can't, you know, either that or he's drawing life out but of it. Then again, yeah, it depends on you, because Hercules is immortal, right? So that's uh, you know a power that wouldn't really work on Hercules. What about his equipment? His equipment is... Um, Presumably not immune to the ravages of time. Well, what it like? It's the the blood is going to stay active on the poison head arrows because it's from the immortal Hydra. That's which he, fair. He dipped the blood into, and then like um, dipped mm. the arrows into the blood of, and then the this is a tough one. The armor made from the lion pelt again. That's just like it's not going to decay anymore. He's yeah. turned it into armor, and he's wearing it. and It's imbued with his godliness. Because that's the thing, like, Jesus is a reality warper, but Hercules is like, no, battle tank. 
Yeah. It's also worth pointing out that like, Jesus can call in the assist in the form of demons and angels. And if one of those angels includes Archangel Michael, we're fucked. But Please don't have a chance. If we're going by death rattle rules, there's no like, allies allowed. It's just one on one fight. Mm. What about if it's like allies in the form of like summons, ads, mobs? I think it's allowed if like you're going to use demon and like summoning fish, but I don't think you can call upon like archangels. I don't think that's allowed. That is a shame. What about all the time he's spent in heaven then? Do you think he's been training with the angels? Nah. I think he's do, you think Archang- do you think Archangel Michael taught him anything? Because the reason I think he's so fucking scary is because Archangel Michael's the guy who ripped the wings off of Lucifer. So Joe, when you get those like really oh, sick yeah. um, uh, statues of Lucifer getting his wings ripped off, mm-hmm. that's Michael who did that. Like, he what? personally ripped the wings. Do you like when Kratos rips the wings off Valkyries? Oh, yeah. That's what Michael did. He's like, fuck you, give me these back. <laughs> Just took so his he, helmet. Like, yeah. That's what, if Jesus can call him in, that's a tough fight. See, I'm going to say it's just the one-on-one. Like, He can use like, demons and nature and stuff like that, but in terms of, like, you can't... Because realistically, Hercules could, like, give a bell to Zeus and be like, get Mount Olympus down here. Yeah, I'm going to put in Jesus' strength level, see if we can get anything here. Um, what is he like? Based on power set alone, I would say Jesus would win it, but I think... Just the sheer battle experience of Hercules might edge him out. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, does Jesus... Because he says, like, you know, the Bible is his strength. Like, you know, God is his power. What does that equate to, like, physically? How <laughs> physically strong was the Son of God? Well, he's just a normal man, wasn't he? Ah, In terms of physical ability. Well, think of that. Like, Bayonet is a normal woman. Look what she does. No, she's not. Number she is. Which. She's number and witch, but she's physically human. That's something they make very clear in the film. Like she can die just like any other human. It's just she's very, very good. But again, her powers is calling in giant demons and using yeah. like ridiculous weapons. Would Jesus call on Madame a Butterfly? That's the <laughs> Would he use God like Madame a Butterfly? Joe, you know, like the Umbran Witch, where she's calling in like the big fist from the underworld. I mean, Could Jesus do that? Again, I think he might be able to, but if this is a one on one, that's not allowed. Well, you know, um, in Death Battle, when uh, it's Bayonetta versus Dante, she used Madama Butterfly. But that's something that she has control over. I'm just thinking, could G- if he can call on demons, could he do that? Could he call portals I, to I hell? I presume he could probably just be like, hey, hey, Dad, give us a hand, a literal hand. So I'm thinking that'd be amazing. This is so stupid, I love this. <laughs> this is the stupidest thing we've ever fucking talked about. <laughs> oh, they should teach this in schools. Because like that's the thing is I'm imagining you know Jesus there like God by his side with like that Thanos horde about to take on Hercules, but then yeah, like Zeus comes in and does like the on your left and just all of Mount Olympus come through portals. Ooh, and, like, I'm thinking all as well. Those, like, like horses come in just to murder. Because that's the one in Christian myth as well. There's not many heroes. Mm. Like you have Samson. Samson was pretty good. Like taking out an entire army of the jawbone of an ass. That's like a, that's a pretty good feat. And then you got the bear guy, the guy who just summoned all the bears. That's true. When you think like Christian mythology, you don't often think of like. I don't think the uh, Jesus disciples really have any power in this fight either. You've got the power of betrayal. <laughs> Judas coming in. Like maybe that's it. Maybe Jesus just sends Judas to become Hercules' friend. Yeah, someone does point out him. though, uh, pre condensation, this will be a battle thing um, I'm not aware of. Or a Bible thing I'm not too familiar with, but um, there was a there is a war where they fight Lucifer. But Jesus wa- wouldn't have been in that war, right? No, but like God would have been, and isn't Jesus like doesn't he have all of God's wisdom? So would he technically have God's battle experience? But they only fight one dude, don't they? Or do they do they fight? I don't know much about this. Do they fight like they Lucifer fight and, and a bunch demons. of his followers that he's converted yeah. as? Yeah. I don't know too much about the, <laughs> the battle between God and Liz. I'd like to think, though, like a fight with Jesus, it would be like fighting the Ginyu Force. Just calling in all those assists. Yeah, that's the one. He'd be like could that. He just... body change? Oh. Like, could well, he he's... pull off a Captain Ginyu? He pose for it. He's got the fucking T-pose but to he... send it out. He has the T-pose, and he has like all of these abilities to just take... You know, demons out of people and stuff like that. Could he do it with his own soul? Mm, could he swap the souls of the bodies? Maybe. Could he body change? This is an interesting question. Like, tune in next week when we do this. You know what? I think we've talked about this for too long. 
We might this, this is the stupidest one we do, but I love how serious we took it. You have to, though, because it, the moment you stop taking it seriously, it's not interesting anymore. Yeah, because if you just say they're not real, because you know someone listening to when they're not real, it's like, well, you're fucking boring then, aren't you? Yeah. It's like, like if you I, take... You know, let's let's put out, like, a, a tweet about this one. Could Jesus beat uh, uh, Hercules. Hercules in a fist fight? If you take every, all these feats from the Bible as being literal. Like, let us know, people. Like, I don't know. Who do you, what side are you on? Are you on Team Hercules or Team Jesus? I still get a giggle at that fucking tweet. Of, imagine you get to heaven as a Christian and it's just Jesus. You think you're expecting Jesus, but it's Anubis. And someone just responded, I'd say, nice fursuit, Jesus. <laughs> fucking great. Um, Can you imagine if, like, and like, what am I? If, if Egyptian mythology, it just oh, turns yeah. out they're all furries. <laughs> but like, you know, their minds couldn't comprehend what a furry was, so they just mm. assumed they were alligator people. Like they just thought Anubis was a big cat guy, but it's actually just in a big suit. I think Anubis is the dog. Anubis is the dog, right? Okay. Oh man, can we talk about fucking just? Could we go through some Egyptian gods? Oh yeah, sure. Egyptian, because that's what I've um, I like I've. Offered. Obviously, seen other people have this take. It's we get like a list of thought. them. But it's got to be a list. Oh, here we go. It's like, what does God of War do after Norse mythology? Egyptian like, god. Take him to fucking Egypt. Oh, man. That'd be awesome. So, who's your favorite Egyptian god? And why is it just fucking Anubis? Um, that's the thing is, like, I can't remember. You know, if, I think if you learned it around the same time I did, I was, you know, did. 10. Yeah, there's my favorite whole about Egypt. Do you know why I like Horus as well? Because he's uh, interchangeably or intermittently portrayed as um, either a man with a bird head or, as he is right here, just a fucking bird wearing a pope hat. <laughs> <laughs> just look at this fucking regal-ass bird. I'd worship that bird. Look at him. I have so many. Oh my. Just look at look at it. He's just he's just an eagle wearing a pope hat. <laughs> that, that, he, that'd be great. Can you imagine getting to heaven and that's who judges you? It's like when you're in God of War, isn't it? Is that fucking chicken just watching? You don't get to fight it. The I chicken. get so pissed off. Yeah, during you fight in the gatekeeper to hell in God of War 2018, and you look over, there's that giant fucking bird. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. You try to fight, and you're like fuck you. Because uh, it's a crow, and I got very confused and like chicken. What? Oh, great. Uh, more like gods just need to be a fucking eagle and a pope hat. Anyway, you know what? We can end it there. We can. I want, I want to end it because that's fucking amazing. And um, it's getting quite late. And I know you want to stream later, Lucas. I am streaming later. Speaking of which, would you like to um, uh, let the people know they can find that? And I'll let the people in my chat know. There you go. Yeah, um, that's where you find Lucas' stream. So, to people watching on the stream, I'm going to be streaming on my channel in like what's the time now? In about two hours, maybe, mm -hmm. I'm going to be going through the start of Psychonauts 2, because I haven't started Ooh. that yet. And Let me know it is. I will, yeah. Um, and the then people listening to the podcast version on the Thursday, yes. uh, Thursday nights weekly, I've been doing a Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door playthrough. I've done like the first mm -hmm. chapter of the game. So like about 10pm um, UK time, Thursday nights, I've been doing Paper Mario. Yeah, and then Friday, uh, I'm going to be doing what we like to call a big stream, which is a stream where we announce it on the main Factory channel. Mm -hmm. And they generally get, like, you know, about 100 people in consistently. A couple yeah. hundred people in at the start, and then, like, people filter in throughout the fact. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout the rest of the evening, that's going to be on your channel. And have you decided what we're playing yet? Yeah, we're playing Pokemon Unite. Yeah, so we're going to be playing Pokemon Unite, and that's going to be on Lucas's channel. I'll be streaming as well, but um, uh, the deal I have with you, Lucas, isn't it? It's like you... Uh, we swap off when we do these um, uh, announcements once per month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To Makes drive people sense, towards both of our channels. And uh, that is Legend of Kanto on Twitch. And you can find like a link in the description of whatever podcast you're listening to or video yeah. version. Which is one of those like awkward things about um, uh, streaming, isn't it? It's, like, it's difficult to let people know that you do it. And every single time that we do stream, there's always something like, well, I didn't know you streamed. Mm -hmm. Like we shout it quite often, but yeah, clearly not enough. Not enough, not enough, yeah. And uh, yeah, for everyone who's in my chat watching, thank you very much.